Who's Paul? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I'm going to be explaining one really old story, actually, which was my first business, which is about nine years ago right now. Uh, but you're going to see, actually, the impact on thing now. So to give you a quick backhand, I'm French, so sorry if it's written in French. Uh, for the company we launched in, Fran in France at the time. Um, August 2008 was the time we actually closed the company. So we got started early 2007. The concept was an online community to connect brands and consumers and creative people to be able to create new products. So it looks really fancy. Uh, it's like all about crowdsourcing, communities, Kickstarter, but in 2006. And as you're going to see, that was fairly well done, but there were a few problems. Um, to give you a background, we were two co-founders, uh, well at the time launching big advertisement campaigns for international companies like Nissan, Longchamp, advertisement basically, the kind of stuff that doesn't work. Um, and I got bored with it, uh, so I asked a friend of mine who was studying with me, do you want to create a new business? We're going to be innovative, we're going to be the new Zuckerberg, we're going to make millions, and uh, we're going to go retire on the beach. Um, at the time, we were lucky, we got 60,000 investment from an incubator in France, uh, without any engagement, no shares, nothing. The deal was if you actually fuck up your brand or your company within two years, uh, keep the 60,000 for yourself. Uh, if you actually continue the business, you're going to pay us back over five years, no interest. So perfect deal. Uh, we had a partnership with different uh, design schools in France. Um, the Minister of uh, Creativity or Design, I don't know what they call it in Spain, but like lawyers, everything was really, really good. Uh, a team of designers and developers in Madrid, a city of Budapest, uh, and a few other people around. But to be honest, that looks really good, but we're fucked. I mean, we're really, really fucked from the really beginning. I'm going to explain you exactly why and all the mistakes we've done of the idea. Uh, first off, complementary skills. Uh, you discussed the matter before, but my co-founder had the exact same profile as I did. He was coming from a business school, he was a marketer, was really good at bullshitting, uh, quite good at selling, uh, really bad at designing, programming, like me, exactly. So that was the first thing, because if you want to have a direct discussion, if you want to actually get feedback from the others, I mean, you need complementary skills. If the boss, I agree all the time, you're not going anywhere. Like, you think we should go right? Yeah, let's go right. Okay, but there's a war. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's go. So that's the first mistake we actually did. So even so, we had 60,000 in the bank, we had people, we had the team, we had everything. The first co-founders being exactly the same, not really recommended. So I'm going to explain in details more. The second aspect was, I was the one driving the project. Obviously, you can't drive a project alone. You need co-founders, you need support. But don't give 50% of your shares, please. Uh, I mean, I knew the guy for years. We studied together, we partied together. And he was living in Spain. I knew I wanted to build something with him. I just didn't know when. And the day I called him, I said, let's do it. We met in Madrid, spent three days brainstorming, and we just went for it. But I just gave him 50%. It's all good when it goes well. Uh, the day you have issues, the day you have problems, uh, what do you do? Because no one has the end, or no one is driving the strategy. No one is taking the decision. So, both of them had the exact same power inside the organization, and remember, same profile. So, I mean, you're blocked. Even so, you can't do anything. There is no one to actually tell you you shouldn't do this. We didn't take any external investment. I mean, we had the money from outside, but we didn't give away any shares. So, because you don't give shares, it doesn't matter if they are here or not, they just give you the money. So, that was the second problem. Never ever launch a business 50 50. I mean, that's one recommendation I would do. Even so, you're really complimentary and you really love working together, not <coughs> good. Uh, thanks God, I still speak to him. Uh, he's still a good friend of mine, even so, we didn't really speak for six months after that, you know, just to smooth things down. But that's a second recommendation, never do 50 50. I mean, I've done it once, I wouldn't do it twice, that's for sure. Um, the last one, I mean, last one, next, fuck up. Um, well, uh, I don't know about Spain, I mean, what I've saw, uh, but people always say write a business plan, 50 pages, go to Barcelona Activa, they give you templates and what to follow, how to correct, and get up with 50 pages, analysis, what, all of that. I mean, that's bullshit. Uh, it's, really, it's really bullshit. You know, you've got a project that works and you know what you want to do, and you've got traction and people want to invest in your company, or you don't have an idea, you don't have a clue, and what you do is you do what you learn at school. Write a business plan, you know, like those end of the study stuff you do. 
I mean, you write one version to get the investment, you write a second version to get a partner, you write a third version because you're not sure about something you thought about. <laughs> no, come on. I mean, we get the 60,000 with one dem with one PowerPoint. We have nothing else. Huh? Like, one PowerPoint, two guys, 21 years old, and we just came there. 20 guys, experts, all of them. They didn't know anything, actually, but I mean, they were experts. Uh, <laughs> and we get the money. And then they ask you to your 60 pages business plan to correct it three, four times to be able to move on. I mean, you've got KPIs, you've got like one Excel file with all of your KPIs you review on a monthly, weekly, or quarterly basis, doesn't matter. You've got one PowerPoint which you update the latest numbers if you want to get extra investments. But the business plan, no, no don't, I mean, don't waste your time. Either you know what you're doing or you don't. Uh, there is no in between. So business plan, I hope there is no teacher of around there, but <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't recommend it. I mean, know what you're doing, that's for sure. Uh, track your numbers, uh, track your KPIs. When your investors ask for information provided, but don't waste your time writing 50 pages stuff. Uh, that one's a good one. Uh, I live in Spain now, but at the time, I was finishing my studies in the Netherlands. Uh, I had studied German and Dutch and English. Uh, I couldn't speak a word of Spanish, obviously, and the developers were Spanish. Um, they couldn't speak a word of English either, so I couldn't discuss with those guys. <laughs> yeah, kind of an issue. Uh, same for designers. Um, we had one designer and two developers. So my co-founder spoke Spanish. He grew up in Spain, he lived in Madrid, even so he was French, so he could speak with them. But me, I couldn't. And you know when you got issues and you're like, why didn't we do a release last week? Why didn't we do a release yesterday? And they can't actually explain you, or you use Google Translator. Uh, at the time, it was fairly bullshit. Uh, Google Hangout with automated translation didn't exist. So you're just standing there with your own project, with the money burning, you're like, what's going on? <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> you're fine. So it seems stupid huh, when you say it. But uh, even so, you're not the one in charge of technical aspects. Make sure you understand it. I mean, right now, I've been involved in different projects where I was not in charge of technical stuff or product management or anything like that but I always knew exactly what they were speaking about because when you got an issue and you need to get a decision, uh, don't rely on Google Translator. Uh, make sure you know exactly what they're speaking about. Uh, next one, keep calm and learn Ruby. Oh yeah. Uh, do some of you know Ruby on Rails? Uh, yeah, one, two people, okay. Um, back in 2006. Um, we wanted to be cool, do a really high end uh, startup company, and we saw an article oh, where think. they were saying Twitter was using Ruby on Rails. Oh yeah, oh yeah, if Twitter <laughs> is using that, we need to use it. That seems really cool. Everyone says it's pretty easy. I don't know. Back then, no one knew about Ruby on Rails. I mean, the one who knew about it were in Silicon Valley, and you had to pay about $150,000 per year if you wanted <coughs> to get those guys. So. We went for it anyway, because it sounded cool. Uh, we were on uh, Amazon for the hosting and the database, again, that was fairly new, but we wanted to be like king of the world. So, prime was, I didn't know because I couldn't speak Spanish, the developers were PHP developers. And <laughs> when they started working on the platform, actually, they were learning Ruby as they were going. So, and then you figure out, why aren't we launching? Ah, oh, yeah, we were solving an issue with the server. No, they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, just didn't know about it. And my co-founder, because he had the same profile as I did, didn't know either. So we spent about five to six months going back and forth, paying extra bills, extra money, and so on. For what? Uh, nothing. I mean, 2015, I would recommend Ruby on Rails. To be honest, my latest venture, I'm building it on WordPress. Uh, Backend uh, for emailing is on Mailchimp, and I've got the whole CRM. Everything I could do it myself, I understand it. I don't need anyone to tell me about it, and if it's uh, not working, I know what's going on. So, uh, use frameworks. Right? In 2015, you've got as many frameworks as you want, you've got as many languages which are controlled and known by developers. Keep it simple. Don't go and try to redo the world, except if you're a really high end technical starter, which wasn't our case, forget about it. Again, keep it simple and just focus on what you know about. Focus. Uh, good one. Um, so we couldn't decide what to do with the money uh, because we got it for free, per se, but we had to actually allocate a certain percentage of 60,000 for different uh, usage. So we had to invest at least 15,000 into research and development because to get the money we had to show that we were innovative. So we did a partnership with a university of technology that kind of was working on collaborative annotation of objects on the international world or something like that. I mean, really abstract, but we wanted 60,000, so we accepted. Premise, we had to work on things we didn't care about. Um, then 
we kind of focused on trying to make money because all the money we got was for paying uh, the developers and the designers and the lawyers and uh, all of that, not for paying ourselves. I was 21, so I had no cash at all. So every weekend I was working uh, in bars and wherever I could uh, to get cash and pay the bills, and the rest was for developers. And because of that, we tried to get money as quickly as we could, and we actually started doing consulting for other companies. Uh, we were in relationship with the mayor of the city to build a collaborative platform to do uh, votes and involving citizens and all. And in the end, we kind of started going around the room and trying to do everything and nothing at all. And that relates to the fact that when we launched, business plan 50 pages, 4.0. Uh, and then because we were just trying as quickly as we could to make money or do something, we just lost the focus. Um, I mean, when you're doing a project, you have to know about it, you've got to be passionate about it, and if you've got to find a solution, find a solution. But don't start diverting yourself and trying different stuff. You're just going to fuck up everything. And we fucked up everything, actually. Um, so that's something to know. And last, uh, timing. Um, timing, 2006, Facebook opened to the entire world in 2007, and you start and go see brands and uh, media agencies, and you say, we're going to do a col col collaborative innovation using a community of designers to create new products. They look at you like, so what? Yeah, you know, like Facebook, what's Facebook? We don't even know what it is. Uh, so that's another thing, timing is really important. Make sure that the timing to market is good, and that you've got the time. However, I need to finish on a positive note. Most of my friends did uh, masters or MBAs in entrepreneurship. Uh, that's something you pay, I don't know, between five and 10,000 euro a year, where they actually teach you how to write a business plan and <laughs> launch a company. Uh, my entire two years cost me 5,000, all included. I didn't have to pay rent, so that's a positive thing, but like in two years of experience, that's how much it cost me. Like, all costs included, that's how much I spent. And since then, I've been doing other stuff, going into other projects. Um, but I fucked up. I fucked up. But if I were to do it again, fuck it up again, miss it again, and go back to my parents' place again, which I did at the time, uh, I will do it again. Because if you don't try, you're not going to fail. And the best thing about doing those things is you actually learn. I can tell you the businesses now when I go for them or I advise people, I do the opposite of everything I've done. It. But um, that's something I recommend and just. Yeah, fuck it up. And fuck everyone up, to be honest. Just do whatever you love, do it whatever you like, uh, and just try not to make too many mistakes, and uh, you will see. That's a, that's a lot of fun, actually. It's really, really funny, and uh, again, I will fuck up anyway. Anytime again. Thank you.